From being one of the most expensive TV shows ever made to one of the lead stars worrying it was the worst mistake of her career, these are some of the crown facts fans probably didn't know. A series about the royal family gotta have royal expenses. So it turned out to be one of the most costly shows ever. Sounds about right. Get this, each episode of the recent season 5 cost about 14 million bucks. Whoa, that's more than the entire budget of some movies. And this is only one season, guys. Since its Netflix premiere in 2016, more than $500 million have been spent on the show. And just when you think that's a buckload of money, I've heard the upcoming season 6, which is also the final one, is gonna hit it out of the park, making it the most wallet draining of the lot. Right now it's in production, and there's no final number, but you best believe it'd be somewhere on the higher end. The expenses make sense when you start listing the areas, swallowing mouthfuls of money. The CGI and special effects cost an arm and a leg, and the luxurious costumes with those gorgeous accessories cost a pretty penny too. Not to mention, paying the A-lister cast that needs to be replaced every two weeks, the larger-than-life crew, and shooting in a variety of locations, like the Lancaster House, Ellie Cathedral, and Lyceum Theater, to name a few. But you know the one place they didn't film at? Buckingham Palace. Sounds unbelievable, I know. The royal residence popped in way too many scenes. But trust me, no amount of money can help in buying your way inside it. Only exterior shots of the building were used in the show, and for the interior, they either went to other locations like the Lancaster House or created sets for these scenes. They'd put a massive dent in the wallet, no cap. Now, to make these sets incredibly realistic, researchers went on actual tours to visit the majestic crib and get inspiration. But their goal wasn't to make a replica, they just wanted the sets to give big royal energy. And damn, the way those magnificent palace rooms on the show made me feel poorer. I'd say it worked. Gotta give credit to the series creator for that. Peter Morgan did a world-class job translating the crown pad on screen. And convincing viewers that they're at the royal palace. Morgan's extensive experience with royal-related production came in handy there. He hasn't only written a play about Queen Elizabeth II, but has also produced the award-winning film The Queen. The guy knew what he was doing. That's why he covered all bases, from lavish sets to jaw-dropping costumes. Speaking of the royal wardrobe, did you know creating a replica of Queen Elizabeth's wedding dress took weeks? Costume designer Michelle Clapton will tell you all about that. She named it the most challenging piece to work on. Why? Because the audience had already seen the iconic dress in the real-life live ceremony. It was deja vu on a hanger for them. So they couldn't take any creative liberty with it. And that's why it took the longest time to create. And how did they make it? Well, let's break down the process, shall we? First, Michelle did a ton of research on it, collecting visual references and turning to historians to get accurate, teeny tiny details. Then, time for the real deal. Get this. Six people alone were embroidering and making the train, which took six or seven weeks. Another designer embroidered the bodice in three weeks, and then the main part of the dress had a whole separate team fussing over it. It required special skill to decorate every nook and cranny. Clapton said it went on for weeks and weeks. Next, they moved on to do fittings with Claire Foy, which again required constant adjustments. But after a few hiccups, it was wedding time. And Claire blew everyone away wearing it. The dress was ditto the real-life version. It wasn't the only perfect wedding gown from the show. Emma Corrin's Princess Diana dress had a similar effect on people. In fact, the actress said that when she walked out wearing for the first time, everyone was left speechless, like she was the real Diana. Wow, sounds spiritual, and believe it or not, spirits visited the crown set too. More like one of them was called by Helena Bonham Carter. She met a psychic to get Princess Margaret's blessing for playing her character. You heard that right, folks. She dropped the bombshell that she talked to her and the princess was happy with her selection. 
saying, better you than the other actresses. Bet, it all sounds so trippy. But wait, there's more. Allegedly, the royal spirit even had some pointers for her, like becoming more groomed and getting the smoking right. That was her weapon for expression. Yeah, not gonna lie, looks like it's a wizarding world and the crown crossover. But to put things into perspective, let me spill some more spiritual tea. Carter personally knew the Countess of Snowden before she passed away, because her uncle used to date her. Oh yes, he used to guard her when he was in the Grenadiers. And they ended up hooking up. We know they never married, but the two stayed close friends. Now look at fate. Helena ended up playing her on screen. That's why getting her approval meant so much to her. Well, now you know Margaret somewhat gave a thumbs up, but do the other royals approve of the show? Let's find out. For starters, Princess Eugenie can't get enough. She has publicly raved about its music, story, and how it's beautifully filmed. It all makes her proud to watch it. But she couldn't speak for the other members, and that makes me think, do they even watch it? Well, according to Matt Smith, Queen Elizabeth II used to watch it on a projector on Sunday nights. A rumor that's never been confirmed, but when Matt's friend asked Prince Philip if he does too, he was like, don't be ridiculous. Okay then, moving on, Smith, who played Philip in the first two seasons, also mentioned meeting Prince William and asking for any tips or pointers that help him nail the character. But all the heir to the throne had to say was, his grandfather's a legend. Later, the crown prince met Olivia Colman too, who's his on-screen grandma, and told her that he doesn't tune in for the show. Oh, bummer. Prince Harry, on the other hand, was super chill when he met Smith, even greeting him as granddad. He has said multiple times that he watches The Crown. In fact, he's more comfortable seeing his family's story on the show than the news, because he knows it's loosely based on the truth. Harry had cast suggestions if the makers wanted to include his grown-up version. He picked Homeland actor Damian Lewis as a potential candidate. Oh, interesting choice. I can imagine the redhead playing the young prince, and while we're diving into an imaginative cast, check out these actors that almost got cast in the show. In 2018, Marvel star Paul Bettany popped up as a solid candidate to replace Matt as Prince Philip in the third and fourth seasons. For a while, it looked like a done deal, but then Paul had some scheduling conflicts, so he bowed out. And Outlander's Tobias Menzies came to the rescue. Before the show aired, creator Peter Morgan was having trouble choosing his Elizabeth. He had many auditions and was inclined toward Felicity Jones, but then Claire Foy walked in with her queen-like vibes. And unfortunately, it was game over for Felicity and everyone else. Now, considering that she won two SAG Awards, an Emmy, and a Golden Globe for her awesome performance, it's clear as day that she was perfect for the role. But she did have some doubts about booking the show. Once, she thought she'd made the worst mistake of her life by signing up for it. She said that what looked like a dream project once quickly became a nightmare. Because she had a super hard time being a new mom and working on set. Get this, when Foy auditioned for the role, she was six months pregnant. And then she gave birth and immediately started working. It quickly dawned on her that breastfeeding her kid was going to be a challenge. One moment that truly made her question everything was when she had to tell her husband to give their baby formula while she sat on set trying to get her broken breast pump to work. Thinking, did she do the right thing signing up? Well, balancing two incredibly demanding roles would take a toll on anyone. But despite the struggles, hats off to Claire for being a super mom and a superstar that served a royal feast for the eyes. So from one of the lead stars worrying it was the worst mistake of her career to being one of the most expensive TV shows ever made, those were some of the crown facts fans probably didn't know.